I saw in one of your Instagram posts, you were talking about when you're 18 years old in your parents' basement gym, you know, you, you read somewhere, go heavy or go home. So you wrote that on the wall, right? Mm -hmm. And then you also wrote a phrase from Corinthians, mm -hmm. right? 924. They that run a race, run all, right? So I get to go heavy. Mine I, said go big or, or get big or get out, I think I wrote. Was, yeah, there was a bunch get of Get big those, or get out. Yeah, little stupid you know, ones body. like that. It tried um, so... I, assume I still have that sign. But you still, oh, you have, you still have that original. I sign. have it, yeah. Oh, really? And you have it in your gym now? It's in my home. It's my yes. gym's in my garage now, but it's still in the home, right where it always was, okay. in the basement. So how is? I mean, first off, why did you go from? Why did you write the Corinthians? It's they that run a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. Run your race that ye may obtain. So it's about everybody is in the race. Everybody's trying. But only one person gets to win the race. Mm -hmm. So you should run with the intention to win. Mm -hmm. Means go for it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Simply, yeah. simply go all in. Run to win, mm -hmm. not to just race. And, and so it, it, it sort of is a little antithetical to some of the uh, ideas about, uh, you know, everybody's a participant and, you know, but, but, but in, in the world that I grew up in, and that, that is competitive athletics, participation is, is, has no, is, gets no reward. Only winning gets a reward. And that's, that, that's not necessarily the way I look at life or, or competitive athletics now, but it certainly was at one time. Uh, no, that's made why a lot of sense to me. To it is, you know, it made a lot of sense yeah, to me. Yeah, when we then. go way back, you know, what. Was it sports that kind of drove you into the basement to train or what, what brought you to it? Yeah. So, so I started with sports and then I got disillusioned with sports cause I was in, I was involved in team sports and, and I, I remember sitting in game films the day after we played and lost and in game films, every, every, the line coach and the, every coach goes over their players and tells them what they did right and what they did wrong. Mm -hmm. Every time you screw up, Everybody else sees it in, oh, yeah. in game oh, yeah. films, and you get yelled at. <laughs> and so we'd go through this, and of course, I was doing my job. I wasn't making mistakes. I was beating my man, and nobody was yelling at me. And we're losing, we're losing, we're losing, but I'm doing my job. And not, not that I'm a prima donna or anything, but I got tired of my outcome, winning and losing, being dependent on other people doing their job but that's what a team sport is mm -hmm. but when i was young i got fed up with you know why why doesn't everybody else do their job mm -hmm. i'm doing my job and then I, I didn't get a holier than thou attitude but i got this that i don't think i want to do team sports anymore mm -hmm. that was when the introduction to weights happened i got hurt my freshman year of football in high school and i had a knee surgery and I went in to rehabilitate it, and I went to a local Nautilus place because they had a leg extension machine. And they taught me this, this protocol. You, uh, you come in, and you do one set to failure. If you can do 12 reps or more, then the weight was too light, so you needed to add five pounds, or two and a half pounds, actually. And if you couldn't do eight, it was too heavy. So it had, it had a structure to it that you want to you fail mm -hmm. 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. If you get 13, you got to go up mm -hmm. next workout. And if you can't get 8, you're not strong enough for that weight. Very structured. And so I was making plenty of progress, getting stronger, putting my 2.5 pounds on, getting, getting 12. And you would start out when you moved up getting 8 or 9. And you'd get 10 or 11, and you'd get 12 or 13, and then you get to move up. So within this was a, was a slow progression of adding repetitions. If this sounds familiar, it's mm -hmm. something that I do, yeah, that yeah. I did in my training. So, uh, and it made sense and it worked. The thing that I said to the, the person that was helping me, I said, so, uh, you know, when's this, when's this run out? When does this, when does this stop? And they're like, what do you mean? And I go, when, when do I stop getting stronger? And they said, I don't, you, you don't. And I said, do you mean I can just get as strong as I want to? And all I got to do? is come in, do as many reps as I can. And if I get 12, I get to put on two and a half more pounds. And if I, and I can't, if I get nine, I have to go for 10. And then, 
And they're like, yeah, you can get as strong as you want to be. And that was it. Mm -hmm. That's when sports wasn't as important as being strong. Mm -hmm. Is this all I have to do is just come in and bust my ass? So that would have put you away like... 14, 15? Yeah, about 15. 15 is when I had my knee surgery, yeah. Okay. And then, so is that where the... So then bodybuilding became the... Okay. The focus, you know. And I had a little bit of an application for sports. I did three sports in college, you know, and, uh, but they, they, they weren't, they weren't going to take me anywhere. They did get me a scholarship, though. I had a scholarship for cheerleading. Yeah. I used to throw girls around. Yeah. And that was good. You got to be strong for that. Mm -hmm. So they, they were, they were complimentary, getting stronger and stronger, throwing the girls higher and higher, doing more tricks. And that was good. And then, and then I played soccer for a year because we didn't have any people on the soccer team and there was room. So I, and I, I loved athletics too. And then one year I did track and field and threw the shot and discus and javelin. So that was fun in college. But it was a big jump from high school to college. How do you like the, um, the track and field compared to the other team sports? Because yes, it's a team sport, but, but it it's is. not. Yeah, I know? liked it. I liked it a lot. The problem was I went to a place called Youngstown State University. And when I got there out of high school, there was no track team. Mm -hmm. And then right before I graduated as a senior, they had a track team. So I lost three years of development going from, you know, throwing a 12 pound shot to a 16 pound Mm -hmm. shot. And that's hard. And then I tried to learn to spin and that's hard. And, Mm -hmm. and I didn't, I ran out of time. So I had, I had one season and I was trying to compete and learn and it didn't go great, but it was fun. You know, but I didn't excel at it. Yeah. It didn't take me anywhere. My story is a little bit the, the same in a way where with football and the other team sports, more so after I started weight training, you know, so I started weight training at 13. So it was a younger age, mm-hmm. but I loved wrestling. Yeah. Like team sport, but we not, didn't have it. Right. <laughs> you know, I love that because my work output determined my result in my head. Yeah, football had the same experience. It's like, come on, man. You know, I'm busting my ass. You know, I'm, I'm putting everything I have into this, but half the people aren't. It drove me insane. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I stuck with it the whole time because, you know, my parents and their pressure to stick with it, not quit and all this other kind of stuff. But powerlifting was always there, you know, since I was young. And that's where I always, I love that individual aspect. You know, granted, team sports, as you said, are team sports. They are. You know, but I often wonder if, you know, a lot of the people that move their way through strength sports kind of all seem to have that thing that kind of targets them more to that individual sport background. You know, it's changed somewhat over the popularity of powerlifting in the past 10 years where more Mm -hmm. team sport people are coming in that generally weren't there before. Like I, I had, I said in Powerlifting USA one time, one of my first articles was, what is strength? You know, just like, how do you define it? And it that came about because I was at a um, college doing a lecture for Louie and we walked through the weight room and I forget what the college was now, but it was, it was a D1, smaller D1 school. And we walked through and there's a record board hanging up on the wall. And all these other coaches are looking up there and like, wow, look at that, you know, 450 squat, 470 <laughs> squat, right? And I'm sitting there, already been in the room. Like, that sucks. Like, lineman squat and 450, that sucks. You know, so, and I realized our, our perceptions of strength. Yeah, perspective. You know, are, are radically, radically different here. And so when I wrote that article, you know, it's, I made this loose observation because I didn't research anything. That powerlifters at the time were nothing but a bunch of people that couldn't cut it in bigger in bigger sports, well, misfits, yeah. or people that retired. You know, is is the work ethic that was there that you're just frustrated because you're not seeing it out of other people on the team sport? Expe- mm. Now, keep in mind what age we were at the time. Yeah, when you were saying that, I thought about all the great guitarists that were misfits, mm-hmm. and they just went to their basement and played guitar, and then later on. They're heading, they're headlining a, a, a rock and roll outfit. And in high school, they didn't have girls, they didn't have sports, they weren't popular, they had their guitar. And mm-hmm. they took that and became excellent with it. Yeah. And that's sort of sort of accurate about some of the powerlifting, you know. Not can't really cut it in the athletic sports, but I can just go and pound on my own. Mm-hmm. I think bodybuilders are like that too, a lot yeah. too. And so I think there's a lot of truth to what you say. What people like you and I had when we looked at 
other people not doing their job and we're doing our job and we're in the team sport and gravitating out of a team sport into a more individual competitive atmosphere was the autonomy. Now I talk a lot about all the people that help you. Yes, yes. And yes. so I try to talk about a team or, or a, a village to make a great power lifter. But the, the, the truth is you're up there alone mm -hmm. and you're under the weight alone. And that, that gives this sense of autonomy. My choices, my effort, my preparedness, everything, all my choices up to this point, they're on me. This is on me. I have nobody to blame or reward. So, yeah, there's no way out of it. It's your fault if you screw up, but then you get the glory too. And I think that's, I think that probably is more of a draw to get people away than being disappointed with other people's lack of commitment. It's hard to watch that. Mm -hmm. when, and it's especially hard as a coach to watch that when all, not all your players have sold out to your program. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard to do that in a, in a, in a weight training program when you don't get buy-in. Mm -hmm. I train with a guy now named Marshall Lee, and he's from England, and he talks about buy-in. You've got to have buy-in. Mm -hmm. You have to have the people believing in what they're doing. You can't be like, well, let me show you. I'll prove it to you. Do this, and then you'll see. they got to go in with buy-in. And if you don't have that, so it's hard to watch people that aren't bought in. And I think if we, if you think back, perhaps you can feel that too, mm -hmm. that you, you were upset that, that not just that you were doing the job and they weren't, but that they weren't committed to trying to do the job. I couldn't understand the difference of people not being bought in, you know? I, I didn't understand either. it. Didn't understand it. I do now. I understand it. Now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, different I mean, people want different things. Yeah. I want what I want, Dave. Yeah. I want what I want. I don't exactly. want what you want. Yeah. I want what I want. So, and then when you understand it, everybody has that. We are the misfits. We are the people that are different. We're the we're we're not the norm. And trying to trying to wonder why all these people around us are not like us is is the wrong way to look at it. We're not like normal people. You know, we were the guys that didn't want to be around other people. Just wanted to be left on and do yeah. my own I, shit. Yes, autonomy. You know, like, yeah. You don't, autonomy. Feel, you don't feel a part, yeah. you know, of what they're all doing. So you're, you just you're do not your a part. But, you're, but that's accurate. Yeah. You're not a part of what they're doing. And, and so it's hard, to be, it's hard to be upset about being, not being in a group when you realize you don't belong in a group. Yeah. You don't belong in a group. It's okay.